So we open with Psy and her man. Oh, Lord, she put a lot of high-definition filter on. She look orange. Her man has the face of a wealthy man. That, that face is wealthy. It would take about 4.5 for me to look up in it. But at 4.5, it starts to change. And that face is probably 15, 16, maybe 20. They've got a beautiful house upstate. Over with Jessel and Dory. Oh, Jessel throwing a uh, clueless party. That was 1995? Oh my God. It's been 20 years. That's the math. That's how it works. It's been 20 years. 20. 20. 20. So the whole opening was absolutely nothing. They need their butts beat for this. Ooh, not me getting greasy like Matthew Knowles. Over with Bryn, she's getting some eye work done. Jenna got a new project since she gonna be an empty nest as soon. Jenna said, did you know I was a clown? You being on this show's a joke with no punchline. Over at Uba's, Rebecca drops by. Uba has some beautiful paintings, I must say. But now we get to talk about the Hamptons. So we find out Uba thought Bryn was condescending the night before, too. Rebecca thinks Bryn was manipulating Uba into being an angry black woman. Back at size, she's got her family visiting. Ooh, and in the house upstate is looking beautiful. That's a renovave. Oh, that's nice that they're planting a tree with her mom's ashes. Down in Soho at Alice and Olivia, Aaron and Bryn do a little shopping with Jessel to join. Oh, but then they get to talk about Jenna and Cy getting close and Aaron can't stand it. I can't stand the fakeness. So Aaron don't want to be friends with Jenna now. I'm going to through a hard time and she hasn't reached out to me because you're two-faced. Oh, God. Bryn wants a written apology from Cy. Because she left her on red. So it's the night of the party. And it look cute. Jenna shows up as Cher's dad. She had that outfit down. And the lines. And as a fashion girl, never saw Clueless. Which is hard for me to believe because I feel like in fashion, that movie has been referenced so much. Rebecca showed up kind of off theme. But Jessel... I don't remember this outfit from the movie. Oh, God. Aaron, you're an idiot. You should have had your husband wear the flannel. He really does. Your husband does kind of give Paul Rudd. I mean, he's nowhere near as handsome. Nowhere near as handsome. Paul Rudd hasn't aged. Your husband has. Your husband kind of got them Jeff Lewis lips. What he been doing with his mouth? Mm. Jessel's like, my man asked me what I want for my birthday. You should have had something picked out by now. Something custom. I get it. And then he gonna whine holidays are created by the greeting card company. It's your wife. What else you got to spend money on? Trips to Vietnam for a sandwich. Mm. Bryn's like, why is Jessel changing her outfit four times? Because it's her birthday and she can change if she wants to. Also, it is a clueless party, so it makes sense. So, Cy and Aaron get to talking and Aaron says, I just realized that Bryn's not, that Jenna is not an actual friend. Because Jenna being friendly with Bryn. However, Bryn tells Jenna, you know Aaron pitched with you because we buddy buddy. Aaron feels betrayed because she's like, I need an authentic connection and I need a friend right now and I don't need you up in Bryn's face because she ain't even your girl. God. The thing is, we do have these moments in our own friendships. Maybe not to this level, but we do be feeling away. But Bryn, all this damn queer baiting, if you're budding up with people that are mean, mean, I won't be happy, happy, and there won't be any more sex, sex. But, and you always are going after Jenna as some type of sugar mama. But then when someone suggests a man's helping you financially, oh, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you didn't defend me to the nth degree. I better have hit record. There is no, if you want to see anguish that you will never see, it's the look on my face 
when I've been going off, giving my all, and it wasn't recording. You want to talk about a mood killer. It just, girl, that fucks up your day. I, I mean, mm, woo, that'll get you. That'll get you. So Bryn don't want Jenna to be friendly with Cy. And Jenna's like, look, let me be friendly with Cy. And if I don't like the heifer, I don't like her on my own. Don't you warn her about me. Don't you warn me about her. But now Bryn trying to get not Raquel, but the other friend of to drink. And she's like, why are you trying to get me to drink? Well, she addressed this in a clip on a podcast. She said the heifer drink like a fish off camera. So I'm like, act like yourself when you're on camera. I can see it. I heard from everyone that you drink, you just don't drink with us. Maybe there's a reason for that. Bryn called that heifer where fun goes to die. The new heifer that said her headband makes her nose look big. And she is giving yawn, but so are all of you. That's why I got to it this morning. Don't nobody give a shit. Thank you, Aaron. You're having a Clueless party, Jessel, but wearing nothing from Clueless. So Bryn's got to head out because she's like, I, I'd i stay for your eighth costume change, but uh, see y'all later. But Jessel, of course, is irritated because she's like, you have a spray tan? That's more important than my party? I mean, maybe. The party's dry. Oh, God, Aaron. You gonna tell everybody but Jenna you feel different about Jenna? Really? That's going to go over well? You just couldn't bring it to Jenna like an adult. However, Jenna's over with Abe, and Abe's like, I've noticed some tension between you and my wife. And Jenna's like, I don't feel any tension. Does she feel any tension? If she doesn't feel it and I don't feel it, then where's the tension? Oh, God, Aaron. I have so many great friends. I don't need to have one that doesn't feel authentic. I just don't feel close to her, and that's okay. Abe's like, I I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm going to lose. Good, good. He's like, I'm not trying to be Penelope Thomas. Penelope Thomas Bailey. Oh, God. So now Jenna goes over to the group. So now Aaron literally talking to everybody with Jenna there. I'm going to move. Uba's like, will you talk to Aaron, please, Jenna? Because she's so damn sensitive. Now Jenna finally sits next to her. And Aaron says, this is where this is getting really intense. You're making it intense. Just take a step back from a friendship quietly. You don't need to announce and have fanfare. So as Jenna sits down next to Aaron, she's like, girl, what's up? And Aaron's like, well, I just don't know if I want to be friends with you anymore. And Jenna's like, are you trying to rile me up? Are you trying to get on my nerves? Like, I'm not going to take this bait. And I'm with you. Things just started to shift. Bryn's writing, you're the closest one to me in the group. And Jenna's like, I didn't write that. Yes, but things started to shift. You're playing into Bryn's hand. Jenna's like, I've been with my girlfriend and working. I barely talk to anybody. I'm here for a commercial. So Aaron's saying Bryn's single white femaling her, inserting herself into her friendship, using her makeup artist. She referred to Jenna. She saw her and Jenna close, so she's trying to wreck that. Okay, girl. I mean... I think she's just looking for a plot line more than anything. Jenna's like, look, girl, I, I didn't try to replace your friendship. I, I'll reach out more. I'm not the best texter. And Aaron's like, all right, all right, I'm going to calm down. What did I think about this episode? These girls aren't it. They aren't it. They, they just aren't it. I'm sorry. They t just, as a group, it's a no. See you soon for something. Something. It's just a no. I, I'm trying to think of where it's a yes. Like, I was hopeful. And I... God. There's just nothing compelling. 